In this video, I'm going to show you how to create these responsive shopping cards using React. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a CoPen project. Right now in my HTML, I just have a head tag and a body tag. For the CSS, I added SCSS as a preprocessor. And for JavaScript, I added Babel because we're going to use React for this project. So if this is brand new to you and you're using CodePen, you can click on this little gear icon and you can add the JavaScript preprocessor of Babel. And within this search box, you can search for React and then add React and React DOM to the project. So to get started with this project, first, I'm just going to add a little bit of HTML code then I'm going to write the entire React app, and then I will style it using CSS. So the HTML for this project is really easy. I just need an ID of root for the React app to hold on to. So with that body, I'm going to add the ID of root. So we're going to reference this ID within the JavaScript. So next, I'm going to jump inside of the JavaScript. So first I'm going to create a component called app and that will hold the entire design for the page. So I'm going to make it a function component, but you can use class components if you prefer. So I'm going to write function and then app, and then I'm going to add a return statement. And first I'm just going to add the text of hello. So that way we can actually see something on the page. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually render this app. So beneath this, I'm going to write react dom dot render, and I'm going to render this app component. And then I have to define where I want that app component to render. Well, I want it to render where that ID of root is. So I'm going to write document dot get element by ID and then reference that ID of root. So now I know that this is working because I actually see that text in the document. So beneath this, I'm going to start by creating the card component. So underneath this, I'm going to write function card. And then for the return statement, I'm going to define the structure of the element using JSX. So here I'm going to create a div and I'm going to give it a class of card. Now with React, you can't just write class because that has a different meaning within JavaScript. So here you have to write class name. So this div is going to hold the entire card container. And then within it, I'm going to include an image tag and I'm going to give it the class of card image. I'm also going to include another div with a class of card body. And so that card body will hold the title for the item, a description about it, the price of it, and also a button that will allow the user to add it to their cart. And for all these elements, I'm going to give it a class. So this is the underlying structure for every card that will be on the page. Now, I don't want to hard code any values here, like the title, the description, or the price, because I want that to be variable depending on the actual item. So instead of hard coding anything within the actual card, I'm going to use props to pass the data through the card component. So up here, instead of having that H1 text, I'm going to remove it and I'm going to add a card component. And for that card component, I'm going to set some prop values up here. So first I'm going to add an image, which will be a link. I'm going to add a title for the product. I'm going to add a description and a price. So now I'm just going to fill this in with realistic content. So now we have an image link, a title, description, and a price. And I want these values to be passed in through this card component. So next to this card, I'm going to add props, which will allow us to pass this data through this component. And I'm going to fill in the values here. So for that image source, I want it to be equal to that props.image. So once I add this value in, we can actually see an image in the document. So next I'm going to do the same thing for the title, description, and the price. So here I'm going to write props.title and so on.
Now for this button at the bottom, I want it to be consistent across all of the cards. So I'm just going to say add to cart. So now if I scroll to the bottom of this document, I see the image, I see a title, the description, the price, and the button. So I know that this component is actually rendering on the page. So now that we have one card completely defined, I'm just going to add a few more cards to the page. One thing to note is that we are getting an error, and that's because I have multiple cards rendering in this component. But with React, you can only have one parent element that's rendering. So underneath this return, I'm going to add a div with a class of wrapper, and so this will hold all of the cards on the page. So now that we have all of this defined, I can start applying styling using CSS. So in the CSS, I just imported the font family I'm going to use for the project. And beneath that, I declared variables. And then I added some basic styling that I add to every project. I like to set the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero universally. One thing to note is that I'm also using SCSS for this project, which will allow me to nest CSS elements and also declare variables in this way. So to get started with the styling, first I'm going to reference the body tag and I'm going to set the font family to the font that I imported into the project. And I'm also going to set the color of the text to a gray. Beneath this, I'm going to start working on the wrapper. So I'm going to reference that class of wrapper, which again holds all of the cards. And I'm going to add a margin of two REM. For the actual cards, I'm going to set the display set to grid with a gap of one REM. And initially I'm going to create the mobile view and then I'll make it responsive for desktop. So for the mobile view, I'm going to set the grid template columns to one FR. And I'm going to justify the content in the center. Now, if you're brand new to Grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. Next, I'm going to work on the styling for each card. So beneath this, I'm going to reference the class of card. And to define it a bit more, I'm going to add a box shadow around it of zero pixels in the X and Y direction, a 10 pixels blur and a five pixel spread of a light gray. I'm going to set the border radius to the radius variable. I'm going to set a minimum width to 28 REM. And then I'm also going to set the display set to flex because within the card, I want the items to align in a particular way. Next, I'm going to reference each element within the card. So underneath this, I'm going to write and image to reference the image class for that card. And I'm going to set a specific width and height and I'm also going to set the object fit to cover. So now we can actually see the content on the page a little bit better. Next, I'm going to reference the class of card body, which represents these elements on the right. So for this body, I'm just going to set a margin to one REM. Then I'm going to reference each element here. So first I'm going to reference the title and I'm going to set the line height to 1.4 REM with a margin bottom of 0.5 REM. Then for the description, I'm also going to modify the line height. Next, I'm going to work on the price. So first I'm going to set the font size to 1.4 REM and I'm also going to add a margin top. Now for the price, I also want there to be a dollar symbol before every single value. So there are multiple ways that you can do this, but the way that I'm going to do it is by adding a before pseudo element with the content of the dollar sign. So beneath this, I'm going to write and before. And if you're fairly new to pseudo elements, I have an entire playlist of tutorials showing you how I've used pseudo elements in the past. So I'll link that playlist in the description below. So for this before pseudo element, I'm going to include a content tag of the dollar sign. I'm going to set the font size to one REM with a position relative. I'm going to set the top to a negative 0.3 REM and I'm going to set the padding right to 0.1 REM. So now the price actually includes the dollar sign right before it. Next, I'm going to work on styling this button. So beneath this, I'm going to write and button. 
So for this button, first I'm going to set the border to none, which will remove the default border. And then I'm going to add a border top of one pixel solid and a light gray. I'm going to set the background color to transparent, the font family to inherit, the font size to one REM with a font weight set to bold. I'm also going to set the color to inherit. I want this to take up 100% of the parent element, so I'm going to set the width to 100%. I'm going to add some padding on the top of one REM as well as a margin top of one REM. And I'm going to want this element to appear interactive, so I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. I'm also going to add a hover effect for this element that will modify the color to the primary color in the project. Now for this element, we can see that the image takes up one section, the body is in this section, and then we have this kind of odd gap over here where this line does not completely span this entire body area. So I want to correct this and remove this extra gap right here. So going back up to that body container, I'm going to set the flex grow to one, which will let it span the rest of this container width. So now that extra white space is removed. So this is the entire mobile view for these cards. And now I'm going to want to make it responsive. So it looks good in the desktop view as well. So if I just increase the size of this page, we can see that the cards grow horizontally. But this doesn't really work for a desktop view. So instead, I want to change the layout of the content. So I want the image to be at the top, and then I want the card body, and then I want the button at the bottom. So I'm going to rearrange how this content looks for the desktop view. So beneath all of this work, I'm going to create a media query. So I'm going to write at media, screen and the min width, I'm going to set it to 600 pixels. And I'm going to define how I want certain elements to behave in that desktop view. So first I'm going to reference that class of wrapper. And again, if I scroll all the way to the top in that class of wrapper, that's where we set the display set to grid with a grid template columns equal to one FR. So that basically created one column on the page that was one FR in size. But now I want to modify this for the desktop view. So beneath this, I'm going to reference that class of wrapper. And I'm going to want the number of columns that appear on the page to be dependent on the size of the actual page. So I'm going to set the grid template columns to a repeat auto fit with a min max value of 14 REM to 16 REM. Now, if this is a brand new concept to you, I have an entire video that goes over this specific topic. So I'll link this video in the description below. But this is basically saying that I want the number of grid columns on the page to be dependent on how many will auto fit in the document. And that's dependent on the minimum and the maximum size of each column. And so I want the minimum value to be 14 REM and I want the maximum to be 16 REM. So now we can see that the arrangement of the cards have changed. And if I increase the size of the window, then three cards are visible on that first row. And if I decrease it, only two cards. And if I decrease it again, it goes back to that mobile view. Next, I'm going to work on the arrangement of the content within the card. So I'm going to reference that class of card and I'm going to change the flex direction of the content to column. That way the image will be at the top and the text will be at the bottom. So now we can see that this content has rearranged. Then I'm also going to set the text aligned to center and I'm going to set the minimum width here to 14 REM. So the last thing I need to do is modify this image so we don't have this extra white space right here. So I'm going to write and image and I'm going to set the width of it to 100% and I'm going to set the height of it to 12 REM. So now that extra white space is removed. So now if I increase the window size, we can see that there are three columns on the page. When I decrease the window size, there are only two columns on the page. And when I decrease it enough, it will go into the mobile view, which has a different layout. So there you go. That's how I created these responsive shopping cards using React. 
Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.